This is a tale of an amazing friendship between a baby elephant named Temba and a sheep called Albert. They had a bond no man or animal could break. This is their extraordinary story. A story we were lucky enough to be a part of. We first met Temba two years ago when we answered a call for help from the Sanborna Wildlife Reserve in South Africa's Western Cape. A baby elephant had lost its mother after she fell down a cliff. At just six months old, the calf was struggling to survive. You can actually hear the calf screaming right there now, and uh, it's not a good sign. It hadn't drunk milk in nearly a week, and it was only a matter of days before it died. You can definitely see this calf is hungry. Uh, there's even suckling attempts at other elephant, like just now I tried to suck it from one of the sub adult bulls there. Our veterinarian, Dr. Johan Hubert, was faced with a difficult decision. Let nature take its course and allow this calf to die a slow and painful death or intervene. Johan wasn't prepared to watch an animal suffer. In case they got up there now, she really tried to do the white dog behind it. It's always dangerous working with elephants as they're highly protective of little ones and will react aggressively if they feel threatened. That's quite concerning that calf went down very, very quickly. It's not a good sign. The faster an animal reacts to the tranquilizer, the weaker it is. Johan checks to see if the membrane of the eye is still pink. If it starts to turn white, it means the oxygen isn't getting to the blood. Whoa. Just drop it quickly. Johan fears the worst. John, uh, quickly, just come and get me some. I'll track so right. No, it's, it's all right, it's going again. the years, Johan has treated many wild animals. But this tiny elephant would soon prove to be his biggest and most rewarding challenge ever. I caught up with the team along the way home. At the time, I'd been helping out at the animal hospital. Come on, over here, sweetie. Johan needed someone to help keep Temba cool as temperatures were quickly rising. And elephants can easily overheat and die. He's got his own trunk down there. Thankfully, there was just a couple of hours left before we reached Shamwari. This will we'll seem through, so let's, let's carry on. new home.
The Shamwari Wildlife Rehabilitation Center has helped get dozens of animals back to the wild. Rescuing this calf was the easy part. The hard part would be getting him to feed. Just, there we go. <gasps> Careful. In the wild, baby elephants suckle from their mothers for at least two years. They also eat grass and plants, but it's the milk they need to survive. Let's get a taste of it. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Spread it upside down on the trunk, eh? It's critical he drinks his milk. But forcing a baby this big to do anything is impossible, as we quickly found out. He must be very confused and scared. You know, people always talk about not having too much interaction with babies if you want to get them back to the wild but it is a delicate balance isn't it because this one also needs affection because it's lost its mum no doubt he, he definitely need affection he need that, that that bit of care he need to touch we need to make him feel safe and loved oh, no. there we go. Come on. baby elephants can become very depressed after losing a family member and the state of timber's mind could be affecting whether he drinks or not <coughs> The sooner we get him a four-legged friend to play with and push around, the better. Another baby elephant was out of the question. So we needed to be creative. Everybody recommends a sheep, so I was wondering if there's any possibility I can come get a sub-adult male and, and buy a sub-adult male for me to... In the past, we'd successfully placed a sheep with an orphaned baby rhino. They'd bonded well, and the sheep had become an important support system for the rhino. Oh, come on, come on. Smell it. He doesn't understand this new enclosure, these new surroundings. All of us are sort of strange to him, so it'll take a little time. But until we could find a suitable companion, we would need to be on call 24 hours, day and night. The first shift was mine. Just like children, baby elephants are afraid of the dark. And he was constantly reaching out for reassurance he wasn't alone. Elephants mature at a similar rate to humans. You'd never leave a six-month-old child alone or it would stress out. It was the same for a baby elephant. A new day, and time was running out. Hey, boy. Look what I've got for you. We needed to get this elephant to drink. Oh, yes. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Oh, do you like that? Oh, come on. Oh, oh, good boy. He seemed fine with the grass, but we still couldn't get him interested in milk. would cheer him up and get him drinking as well. There's all the sheep waiting for us to select one. You just point out a four tooth and well, we'll... Now, the sheep may all look the same, but I really believe we were lucky when we got Albert. This one. He was far more than your average sheep. He really was special. He needed to be. He had a big job ahead. It was time for Albert, the super sheep, to make an entrance. 
think we're just putting in. Uh, it's going to be stressful to the little elephant uh, initially, but rather get all the stress out of the way and uh, the sooner they get used to each other, the better for stressful. all of us. Stressful to the elephant. What about the sheep? Uh, Isn't it going to have 200 <laughs> kilos running around after it? The sheep really, really got a problem as well. When Albert arrived at Shamwari, none of us really had any idea how wild and woolly things were about to become. Albert also had no idea of what lay ahead or behind. Give the sheep an escape route. It may not be the warmest of welcomes, but at least Albert's arrival put a spring in our elephant step. The sheep actually does have on its side the fact that it's fast, hey? It can manoeuvre around the elephant. Al Beatty finally had something he could chase and something that was fast enough to escape and not get squashed. Oh, here he comes again. Go, sheep, go. Even so, we'd made sure we had a safe area for Albert just in case things went wrong. It was a good spot for him to rest, but only until he got his breath back, and then the chase was on again. It's not funny. It is. It seemed Albert was just as curious about his new companion. This will only carry on, this will only for the law. By tomorrow they should be the best of mates. Tomorrow they should be fine. In the wild, baby elephants love to play. They're incredibly social, and pushing and chasing each other around is an important part of their day and a vital part of their development. It took less than 24 hours before Temba and Albert were getting along just fine. They were even taking naps together, side by side. It was more than any of us could have hoped for. Now, if we could just get him to take his milk. Oh, hello, my boy. Have you had a little snooze? <laughs> he's fast asleep. Oh, he's beautiful. Look at him. We'd been trying to get him to drink from a bottle. But now it was time to try something new. Hey boy, I mean you can do it. I don't think he wants to get up. I'd seen him drinking water from a trough, and I hoped he might do the same with his milk. For you, can I? I'm just hoping the sound of it running might get his attention. I'd almost given up hope. Come on. Come on. Come on, boy. Yes, come on. Come on, boy. Yes. Yes. Good boy. Oh, my God. He's drinking it. Good boy. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe he's drinking it. Good boy. Good boy. Clever oh, boy. Look at you. It's almost like about 10 days now since he had milk. But this is really, really good, eh? I've really given up hope. I really, really was starting to worry and thought, what are we doing with this elephant here? I think he's a real fighter. It was so long that he, that he survived without proper milk. It was about 10 days now. And just look at him now and suddenly start drinking. Can't be better. It was at this point we decided to give our little elephant his name. Temba, which means hope. I was sleeping, he had his little bit to eat, and now he's back to sleep again. A full tummy, I can't believe this. This is really good, eh? You can see this little animal is at ease now, eh? Mm.
When raising a wild animal, it's always good to spend as much time as you can studying their natural behaviour in the bush. Johan and I were constantly following Shamwari's own elephant herd, and we soon came to appreciate the vast distances they would cover in a single day. The little ones had to be fit if they were to keep up with the adults. It was time for Temba to start his exercise regime. But he wouldn't be alone. I can't believe how easily he's taken to following us. I mean, I know we've done all the bonding with him in the enclosure, but this is incredible. He's up the shooting all the time, right? Eh? Yeah, rubbing up against yeah. you. Oh, you're doing well. Hey, oh. That's fine to see, though. No, he's doing what he should be doing. What a wild elephant should be doing. This is fantastic. And look at Albert, though. <laughs> Come on, Albert. It's amazing to see him out here, given just such a short time ago. I honestly thought he wasn't going to make it when he wasn't drinking milk. Oh, this is really amazing. And uh, we can see he's trying and testing everything there, trying to eat little bits. Uh, obviously, he doesn't know the difference between leaves, good nourishment, thorns. You have to find it out now. So uh, I think the more we get him out, the better. Eh? Sheep are grazing animals. They don't travel long distances, preferring to stand in the one spot rather than exploring their surroundings. Two animals couldn't be more different. But as I've said before, Albert was special. And from the first day they set out on their walk, Albert would always be by Timber's side. Even in the scorching heat, Albert and his woolly coat would be tagging along. It really was a sight to see. The wild animals on the reserve were naturally curious about this odd couple. And Temba and Albert were just as interested in their strange-looking neighbours. While they looked different, there were many things Temba and Albert had in common. For starters, a healthy appetite. The acacia bush is the elephant's favourite food. Sheep prefer grass, but not our Albert. He would eat the same things Temba ate, following his buddy's lead. It's the first time anyone had ever seen a sheep eat from an acacia bush. When Temba wasn't eating, chances were he was doing his second favourite thing, taking a dust bath. And yes, Albert would be taking one too. There was nothing this pair liked more than digging around in all that dirt. looked like he was getting bored, Albert would give him a bit of encouragement to keep him playing. Just like children, baby elephants don't like taking a bath on their own. Luckily, Timber had Albert to keep him company.
As the days passed and timber grew bigger, we were faced with a new challenge, keeping his mind stimulated so he wouldn't get bored. If left unattended, Temba would get up to all sorts of mischief and venture where he wasn't allowed. Our food preparation area was always a place of great interest. Temba knew it was strictly out of bounds, which made it all the more exciting. The only way to stop incidents like this was to ensure we kept Temba entertained in other ways. We introduced all kinds of toys to his enclosure. Here, Timber, catch. Can you catch? Can you try that? We even tried a hula hoop, which he had lots of fun with. Timber, 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 here it comes. Oh, that's it. That's my boy. Clever. Good boy. Well done. Really. Look at the way you use it. Temba used to carry it around his waist, even when he went out on his walks. Yes, boy. Well done. Yes, one boy. Yes, one boy. <laughs> but it was a giant ball that soon became his favourite toy. In the wild, baby elephants love sitting on top of each other. It's a sign of dominance, establishing rank in years to come. already learned the hard way how much elephants like jumping on things. <laughs> we didn't want a repeat performance, so this ball became the next best thing for Temba. We always welcomed the many new arrivals at the Animal Rehabilitation Centre. But I'm sorry to say, that wasn't always the case with Temba and Albert. It's going to be very interesting because they haven't been together before. I think Temba's most probably going to challenge Spaghetti. 
and uh, we all know that lately spaghetti is getting a little bit more aggressive so it would be quite interesting to see whether spaghetti stand its ground or whether it's going to have a, a go back at timber what albert's going to do nobody would know <laughs> most of the run away <laughs> In any playground, children will choose a side or a special friend. And it was the same with our sheep and elephant. They let all the animals know that theirs was an exclusive friendship and outsiders were definitely not welcome. It wasn't until the arrival of a baby giraffe called Melvin that things began to change. Melvin was also rescued from another reserve after his mother abandoned him just hours after he was born. Come on, little one. Come on, little okay. one. Oh, come on, sweetie. Come on. Just like with Temba, the biggest struggle was getting him to feed. A little bit of a suckling reflex, but he's not swallowing very nicely. He doesn't know what to do yet, does he? Come on. He just didn't want to swallow. Although he had a bit of a suckling reflex, he's not really swallowing properly at all. And he's coughing a little bit now, so we already managed to get some of the milk down its, down its trachea. So it doesn't help keep on fighting him now. What we must rather do is try and feed him very little bits at a time, fairly continuously. But at the moment, I think we need to give it a bit of a break and, and see how it goes. One thing all babies have in common, whether they're two-legged or four, is a fear of thunder. <laughs> And our little ones were no exception. The good news was we'd finally gotten Melvin to accept his bottle. The bad news was all the rain was wreaking havoc at the animal hospital. While Temba and Albert were staying undercover, Melvin was going crazy. It was the first time he'd experienced rain, and he seemed to be loving it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, little one. The only problem was, I was worried he would catch a cold as it was freezing. Finally, I managed to get Melvin undercover and dried off. The winter rains soon passed and it was time for Temba to meet Melvin. The more animal friends he had, the better. No, I'm quite keen that he goes to trees that he can start uh, start eating and see. This is what it's all about. Good.
giraffes are very curious, and Melvin wasn't shy introducing himself. Temba was also very interested in his new next door neighbour. didn't seem too impressed. For him, three was a crowd. But it wasn't long before Melvin was part of the team. The dynamic duo had become a trio. <laughs> Temba and Albert's friendship was truly amazing. It was stronger than any of us could have hoped for but it now created a problem. How would Temba react if anything ever happened to Albert? And then one day, it did. The first sign of trouble was when Albert didn't go for his morning walk. This had never happened before. Johan reacted quickly. It was a sure sign Albert was very sick. Even Temba sensed something was wrong. Temba, we can just get Temba out of the way. Come on, Temba. Tests revealed he had contracted the deadly heartwater disease. It can kill within 48 hours of the first symptoms appearing. Now this is this is a very serious disease. The temperature is almost 41 degrees centigrade, so it's really high. So uh, we must definitely give him something to get the temperature down. And, and some tetracycline as well. Do you think we've got to it in time? Yeah, we should be in time. I think the most important thing is we must keep him in here tonight. We can just have a look later. And um, he must definitely not be chased around now. Johan administered an antibiotic. Now, all we could do was wait and see. There we are. The treatment is normally quite effective. Uh, now and again, we do get a problem, but this one is, is, is uh, really think it's his time. Oh, Albert. And obviously, Albert is a very important animal to us. If we lose Albert, we're going to have big trouble with, with Temba, so we must make sure. Well, Temba will be heartbroken. Yeah, it, it, it will definitely be a disaster. It cannot happen, so we must make sure about this. Not to mention me. I think we'd be pretty upset as well. Thank you, Temba. If Albert was still alive in the morning, then everything would be all right. A new day, and it was good news. Albert was back out walking with Temba as if nothing had happened. spent the rest of the day playing on their favourite termite mound. Albert did, however, need to take the occasional rest. And what better way than side by side with his very best friend. Summer had arrived, and temperatures were on the rise. It was time for Albert to get a haircut to help keep him cool. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, is Albert going to look as skinny as those ones? So just 
Dave, my biggest concern is you're shearing thousands of sheep. There's no chance that Albert might get mixed up in, in with the rest of the sheep because I can tell you, Tembrow elephant will know the difference. No, we'll keep him separate. We'll stop the shearing and then we'll share him separately on his own so there can be no mistake. But just in case, can I show well, you my you secret might... weapon? Yes, with pleasure. <laughs> I decided to make my mark on my precious Albert to be quite sure he wouldn't get lost. There we go, but it's necessary. We mm. can't lose him, can we? No, we won't lose him with that. I've also got his pellets here as well, so he'll come to them. Albert, come on, let's see if you remember the other sheep. This way, boy. Come on, let's go meet the other sheep. It was the first time Albert had seen sheep since we took him from the farm a year ago. Have you forgotten the other sheep, Albert? See, they're sheep. I think he recognises them. I just don't think he's associating with them as much as, as he probably should have been. Yeah, well, others are interested. There we are. Let's see. Now he's, he's reacting now. We were all keen to see how he would react to his own kind after so much time with an elephant. Maybe he thinks he's more of an elephant these days than a sheep. Every day he's with the elephant and now suddenly he's put back with the sheep. He's not probably quite sure. Look, they're all following you, Albert. They're all following you. They're all following Albert. OK. Although he did slip into sheep mode quickly, leading the rest of the herd to the shearing shed. Albert. Albert, come on. It's time to get Sean. Come on, my boy. Here you go, sweetie. Come on. I couldn't wait to see what he was going to look like. He might be slightly slower That's because everybody's watching him. A normal 12 months, you can get up to 90 millimetres length. Like a, he's going to look like a completely different sheep when this is done. Old. what Albert looks like without his coat. Okay, Albert. Let's see. Oh, Albert! Albert, look at you. Albert had emerged half the sheep he used to be. The big question was, would Timber like Albert's new hairdo? Or, more to the point, would he even recognise his little buddy? Are you ready to see the new look, Albert? <laughs> Where is it? Where's Albert? He's about a third the size of what he used to be. OK, let's get him out. Come on, my boy, it's time to meet Temba. It's time to go and see Temba. Here we go, sweetie. It was crunch time. Yeah, let's just let him go. There we go. There we go. Hey, Melvin. <laughs> he doesn't recognise him. It wasn't the warmest of welcomes from Temba. He must have been very confused. He just doesn't realise at this point that it's Albert. It smelt like Albert, but it certainly didn't look like him. Albert didn't seem too bothered. He knew who his friend was and he was determined to stay close behind. The days were passing quickly and Temba was growing up fast. Come on, Temba! Yay! Up this! Up Temba! Come on, boy! We were always trying to find new ways to enrich his life. We built this dam especially for him as he was getting too big for the pool in his enclosure. In the wild, there's nothing baby elephants love more than playing in the water. It's the part of the day they really look forward to. Temba was the same. The first time he saw his watering hole, he was like a child with a new toy. Like it, he loves it! The only problem was, Albert wouldn't join him. There was only so far he would go. 
sheep hate getting wet, and Albert would always keep a safe distance. This is really suitable, and uh, I think it's quite exciting as well. It's fairly deep, and it's quite slippery. It's not just walking out. You really have to struggle to get out, but I think he's enjoying it to do it. Perfect. He knows to swim to cool down and then he knows to rub the dust over him, which of course protects him from parasites and acts as a sunscreen. So he's learning and doing everything that a wild elephant should be doing. <laughs> this is wonderful. I'm so glad we made this for him. Oh, that's nice. Oh, you like having a dust bath with company, don't you? You love a dust bath with company. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. Oh, hi, Albert. See? Here we go. Oh, Albert's being left out. And like any child, when he gets tired, <laughs> he wants to sleep. <laughs> he wants to sleep. But he'll be back tomorrow, I can tell you. We were all so happy to see Temba behaving as a wild elephant should. Things were also going well for our tallest patient, Melvin. He was about to leave us and head back to the wildlife reserve he'd come from. We've always believed that wild animals belong in the bush and not in cages. So every time we manage to get one back where it belongs, it's a huge feeling of a job well done. I mean, the fact is he's going back to where he came from, so that's a good thing, but we're certainly all going to miss him because he's been here for nearly five months now and he really has become part of our family. Yeah, the, the real sad thing about rehab work is the animals must go back to where they came from. In this case, unfortunately, it's not our own reserve, but. I'm sure they look after him well there. But with the happiness comes the tears. It's almost like losing a family member. Even Albert and Temba seemed to know something was going on. Now that's what breaks your heart, because it's not just us that are going to miss him. He's part of the family with Albert and with Temba. You're going to miss him, aren't you, Albert? You're going to miss your tall friend. If he's really lucky, he might see some giraffe on the reserve as well. That'll be the first time he's seen them since he was, well, just hours old. We had managed to get our tallest baby back to the wild. Now it was time to get our biggest baby home as well. The plan was to return him to his original herd at the San Borna Wildlife Reserve. It's true, elephants never forget, and we were confident the herd would remember Temba and take him back. Temba was two years old, and he no longer needed milk. So I think what we try and do is we take him in here, you'll most probably chase spaghetti, I don't know. This was a journey Temba was going to have to make on his own it was time to start breaking that bond between our favourite elephant and our extra special sheep. But he must get used to that and, uh, and, and most probably get used to this enclosure away from the bomas a little bit as well. Eh? Yeah. Right, shall we take him in and see how it goes? The first step was to place a fence between the two of them. They could still see each other and they seemed happy with that. their first night apart, and both Temba and Albert were sticking close to the fence. They were comforted knowing each other was still nearby. The next step in getting Temba back to the wild was to get him into his traveling crate without having to tranquilize him. Each day, Johan would go to the truck and try and lure Temba inside with his favorite pellets. Come in here. Come. Come in here. Yeah. 
Beleza. Tá? Tá? He was getting more and more comfortable with the crate and we were planning to move him in less than a week. We were all very excited. And then the totally unexpected happened. Timber got very, very sick. Johan and I were both away at the time, but luckily Shamwari's assistant vet Murray was on call to help. Murray felt his intestines to try and work out what was wrong with him. Even through the fence, it seemed Albert knew something was very wrong. Abdomen's very tense. So I'm just basically going to give him something for the pain, just basically anti inflammatory. Pain relief was quickly administered, so Temba wasn't suffering. Murray then took a variety of blood samples to determine what the problem was. But within 14 hours of the first signs of illness, Temba passed away. He had died from a twisted gut, and there was nothing any of us could have done. At first, we were all in shock, and then the heartache set in. It was a terrible feeling. Um, Emma gone, and uh, we got so close to the end. Uh, it, was, it was a really difficult situation for us to handle, and I think everybody was, 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 was really very sad about it. Um, but we've learned so much in our process, so uh, uh, it was just a very, very unfortunate situation. But that is what veterinary science is about. Sometimes you've got the results, and sometimes things doesn't work. But we all knew Timber's short life had not been in vain. There were so many positives he'd brought to all of us. Most probably the most important in my life, and. Uh, Never ever I'll, I'll forget him. It, it was, he was such a, sp a special patient. He was not only a patient, he was, he was a friend of all of us. And then there was Albert. He really had been an amazing sheep and friend to Temba. I'd never seen anything like it. And witnessing that friendship between Temba and Albert was really special. You know, I came to realize that elephants weren't just amazing, but sheep also. I'd never have thought in a million years that a sheep could have such an incredible personality as Albert did. Even today, Albert carries on helping the other orphans that come into the animal hospital. We currently have a baby buffalo calf that is suckling from a Jersey cow and a mountain zebra foal that is taken to a donkey we rescued. While Albert will never forget his special friend Temba, we take comfort in knowing that for a short while, a seemingly ordinary sheep proved to be extraordinary. Albert gave a baby elephant the spirit to live, while Timber gave a sheep a feeling of purpose. Timber brought a lot to all of us, and you know, he'll live on. He'll live on with us and how we go forward and how we can continue helping elephants in the wild. We buried Temba in a grave under his favourite tree, the acacia bush, overlooking his favourite dam. 
a single log stands upright, bearing one word that had come to mean so much to all of us. Timber.